Hello guys, welcome. If you've clicked on this video because you're interested in how to build a $700 gaming PC, then you've come to the right place because today I'm going to show you all the parts you'll need, exactly how to build it along with a bunch of gaming benchmarks as well, so you can get an idea of how the PC performs. But first, a quick word from today's sponsor, which is actually perfect. This video is brought to you by BOBKeys.com. You guys know the drill, you build your new PC, you think you're ready to rock and roll, and then you remember, oh no, Windows isn't activated, I need an activation key. Unless, of course, you can deal with this hideous watermark being burned into your retinas until the end of time. Now, you could spend a ridiculous amount on one from Microsoft, or you could head over to BOBKeys.com and pick one up for like, I don't know, a tenth of the price. Do you want to know the best part? You can use my code TT25 for, you guessed it, 25% off which means that this Windows 10 Pro key goes from $18 to $13. If you're in the UK like me, that's £11. You place your order, your activation code gets added to your orders page, you whack the code into the Windows activation screen, and boom, you're ready to rock and roll. Thank me later, TT25 for 25% off, link in description. Okay, so we'll start with the motherboard. So for this build, I went with the Gigabyte A520M S2H. This is a micro ATX board, which should be perfect for this case. Now, if you're planning on overclocking your CPU, you'll want to go with a B450 board instead. But if you're just after a reliable budget focus board that does the job, you can't really go wrong with this. Take out your motherboard and place it onto an appropriate surface. I normally put mine on the box. Step one is to install the CPU onto the motherboard. For this build, I've gone with the Ryzen 3 3100. It's got four cores and eight threads and should be a nice match for our GPU. Now you'll notice here there's a lever next to the CPU socket. We're gonna gently push down on it, pull it to the right, and then fold it back. Next, pick up your CPU, taking care to hold it from the edges. You don't wanna be touching any of the pins. Now if you look closely, you'll be able to see a little triangle on one corner of the CPU. What we're going to want to do is match that up with the triangle on the motherboard CPU socket. Once you're ready to go, gently place the CPU into the CPU socket. You don't need any pressure here, it should just fall right into place. Once you've done that, close the lever and lock it by pushing it down and tucking it back into place. Next up, we need to install our memory or RAM. Now for this build, I went with 16GB of Nighthawk RAM from Team Group. These sticks run at 3200 MHz and honestly, I think they look pretty cool. Now if you look at the memory slots, you should see some little clasps. Push down on these to unlock the slots. Next, take one of your sticks of RAM and look for a little notch on the underside. What we need to do is match that up with the notch on the memory slot. Once you've lined it up, push down firmly on both sides of the memory and it should click into place. You'll know it's installed correctly as the clasps that were previously open will now be closed. Repeat this for the second stick of memory. So for this next step, we're going to need to install our M.2 SSD onto the motherboard. This is what we'll be installing our operating system and games onto later. And for this build, I went with a 500GB model from Crucial. If you want to get a 1TB, you can do, but obviously that's going to be more expensive. So take your M.2 SSD and insert it into the slot at a 45 degree angle. Once it's installed, it should kind of seesaw like this. Secure it by pushing it down and screwing it into place using the included screw. We're now going to install our CPU cooler. Now the CPU we bought actually comes with one and since we're on a budget, we might as well use it. Now I know some people get scared about this part of the build, but honestly, it's easy. Let me show you how. So first of all, unscrew these two brackets and remove them from your motherboard. We don't need them for this particular build. Luckily, our CPU cooler comes with pre-applied thermal paste too, so that's one less thing to worry about. Take your CPU cooler, line up the screws with these four holes and screw it into place. It's literally that simple. I usually tighten the screws from corner to corner. By the way, if you have issues getting the screws to go in, you just need to apply a little bit of downwards pressure because they do have springs in them. While we're here, let's plug the cable from the CPU cooler into this fan header on the motherboard. Next up, we need to install the motherboard into the case. So Deepcool sent out their McCube 110 for this build. It's a nice compact mini tower case. It's clean and minimalistic, and it's really easy to build in. It's also less than $50, which I think is a steal. Now before we actually put the motherboard in the case, we need to fit the I.O. shield. It pretty much just pops in like this, although it might take you a couple of attempts, they can sometimes be a bit fiddly. So now that's done, we can move on to the motherboard. I find it's best to lay your case down on its side for this step. Take the motherboard and line the holes up with these pre-installed standoffs. If it's in the correct place, you should see that all the inputs and outputs on the motherboard will line up with the cutouts on the I.O. shield. Once it's sitting in the right place, you can take the screws that came with your motherboard and screw it into place. All right, so we're getting there. The next step is to install the power supply. So you can stand your case back up again for this part. Now for this build, I went with the Corsair CV450. It's a 450 watt power supply and it doesn't have ketchup and mustard cables. What more could you ask for? 
So with the fan facing down, we're going to slide the power supply into place. The holes on the power supply should line up with the holes on the rear of the case. All we need to do is take four of these screws, screw them in, and that's the power supply installed. Moving on to the fans, now we're trying to keep the cost down on this PC while still having a bit of RGB bling, and so I managed to find this pack of three RGB fans from up here for $30, which is pretty good considering you can pay $30 for just one fan. They also come with a remote so you can change the colours. Anyway, we're going to put two in the front as intake and one at the rear as exhaust. So to install the front fans, we actually need to pull off the front panel so we can access it. Just put your fingers in the side of it and pull. You might need a little bit of force here. Once that's removed, we're going to take a fan, position it about here, then take four of these screws and screw them into the fan from the other side of the case. Pro tip, try and have the fan oriented so that your cables are towards the back of the case and also make sure that you can see this side of the fan. That part's important for airflow. Now for the rear fan. Now this case actually comes with a fan pre-installed in the rear, though for this build we're going to swap it out since we have a spare RGB one. So remove the four screws from the rear of the case, take out the pre-installed fan, and install the RGB one by putting it back in the same place and screwing in the four screws. Again, make sure you can see this side of the fan the same as I'm showing you right now. Now if you really wanted to, you could add the fourth fan at the top of the case, but for a build like this with two intakes, one exhaust is perfectly fine. Now normally I'd wait till the end to connect up all the cables, but we're going to do the majority of them now because once we install our graphics card, it's going to be difficult to reach where we need to be to plug in certain connectors. Let's start with the 8-pin CPU power cable. That plugs in here up on the top left. Next up we have the 24-pin motherboard power. Plug that into this big connector. These next ones are a little bit fiddly, so this one goes into this connector right here. That's for our front USB ports. We've got our HD audio, which goes down on the left here. That's for your front audio jack. Next, we've got these tiny ones. These are the front panel connectors. I'll put a diagram up on screen so you can see how to plug them in a little bit better. By the way, if you look closely, you'll see each connector has an arrow on it. That's the positive side. I'm plugging in the hard drive LED, the reset switch, and finally the power switch. Take your time with these, they are very fiddly. Don't worry though, you're not going to blow up your PC if you get them wrong, it just won't turn on until they're properly connected. That's all the cables for now. The last component to install is the GPU or graphics card. So for this build, I've gone with the 1660 Super, which is actually a really nice match for the CPU we chose. This thing is a beast at 1080p. Anyway, before we install it, we first need to remove the second and third PCI slot covers. You kind of have to snap them off in this case. You'll also want to loosen the screw on this sliding panel. Once you've done that, unlock the top PCIe slot by pushing down on this clasp. Then take the GPU, line it up with the slot, and push it into place. You should hear a little click once it's in, similar to when we installed the RAM. Finally, take two of these screws and screw them into the bracket to secure the GPU in place. Okay, so that's everything installed. We've just got some cabling to finish off. Let's take our GPU power cable and plug it into the graphics card. And finally, we just need to hook up our three fans. So take the included fan hub and plug your three fans into it. I actually put some double-sided tape on mine and stuck it to the case. And the last step is to connect the fan hub to any SATA power connector from the power supply. And that's it, everything is now connected and ready to go. In terms of cable management, I normally just take a couple of zip ties and tie down some of the loose cables in the back, particularly the fan cables. This doesn't have to be perfect guys, just tidy things up a bit. But anyway, here's the finished PC, let's check it out. Alright, so for benchmarks, I've got 10 different games for you guys to check out at 1080p. Starting off with Apex Legends, at medium settings, we came out with an average of 165 frames per second. Next up, Need for Speed Heat, again, medium settings. This isn't a particularly well-optimized game, but this system still manages to maintain an average of 70 frames per second. Moving on to GTA 5, again medium settings, I used the built-in benchmark tool for this and we came out with an impressive result of 135 frames per second on average. 
Next up we have Fortnite medium settings. You're looking at an average of 175 frames per second here, so you'll definitely need a high refresh rate monitor to pair with this system to really make the most of it. Moving on, Call of Duty Warzone, mostly medium settings. We averaged 107 frames per second, which for such a good looking game is rather impressive. Mixing it up a bit here, we have Far Cry 5, another great looking game. On the medium preset, we managed an average of 95 frames per second. All right, Valorant on the high settings. This game runs pretty well on most systems and here we averaged 212 frames per second. I reckon you could possibly reach that 240 mark if you turn down some settings. Up next, Cyberpunk 2077, an insanely difficult game to run. However, on the medium quality preset, we did just about manage to maintain an average of 60 frames per second, despite experiencing some frame drops in and around the center of Night City. Another great looking game, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. At medium settings using the in-game benchmark tool, we averaged 85 frames per second, which I'm sure you'll agree are quite impressive numbers for a game like this. And finally, Overwatch. Again, medium settings, averaging a very smooth 170 frames per second. I must admit, I don't play many esports titles, but being able to reach 144 FPS and above is definitely a huge advantage. So there we have it, that was my $700 gaming PC guide, perfect for 1080p gaming, just pair it with a high refresh rate monitor and you're good to go. It also looks great and it's actually pretty quiet too. Now this is the first build in a new series, I'm going to be doing one of these builds each month at different budgets of course. So if you guys have got any suggestions as to what kind of budgets you'd like to see, then let me know down below in the comments. And yes, I know building a PC is a bit of a nightmare at the moment. Nothing seems to be in stock and everything seems to be overpriced, but I did manage to buy all of this stuff recently at retail price. So you just kind of have to be a little bit patient and just shop around a bit. But yeah, I'll have a full parts list and everything linked down below in the description if you guys want to check it out. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating would be much appreciated. It helps me out. And if you've got any suggestions, please let me know because I'd like to make these guides as useful as possible for you all. And of course, make sure you hit that subscribe button and ding that notification bell if you want to see more. You can catch me on social media at Tech Tesseract. But with that being said, hope you guys have an awesome week. I'll catch you all in the next one.